Hello and good day everyone. Yeah, so Bitcoin has again decided to do a small little breakout. And um, it's not really what I want to talk about today. Uh, I would like to go down into the more micro perspective and just show you guys a little bit about what I've been learning and uh, how I've been using it to identify uh, how price is being delivered to the market and identify where more most likely it is going and using it uh, essentially as a trading strategy now these concepts that i'm going to show you now are not my own although some the way i uh, think about them and implement them is unique okay um but yes these are norm these are the concepts uh, introduced by uh, uh, ICT, you can uh, find them on YouTube and Twitter. Um, right, but I'm not gonna. If you, if, if you guys are really interested, um, definitely check out his work. That's ICT on YouTube. Um, if you guys have any questions, I can also try and answer them. While I'm still learning from him, I do believe I have a relatively good grasp and understanding on some of his concepts, although I don't quite, uh, not nearly at his level of. Uh, of, of, of expertise um, in any way just out of a you know for interest I'd like to just uh, show you some of his his concepts of working in crypto uh, while he doesn't trade crypto I believe he mainly trades uh, other instruments and Forex and, uh, and uh, the stock market and things like that um, but nevertheless his concepts do work in crypto and um, I'd like to just show you some of that today so first of all, I just want to draw everyone's attention to this uh, area of consolidation that we have here. All right, this is our second consolidation after the breakout. Okay, I just want to point. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, overlay the ICT concepts into the chart. Um, right, so a lot of what we do is we first identify a dealing range, then from the dealing range we identify the internal liquidity in the dealing range and the external liquidity in the dealing range. Right, so if we have a look at this impulsive move from the last consolidation, we create a swing low here. Swing low is classified as a as a low with two um, flanked either side by two uh, higher lows, right? So this would be considered a swing low. And the, on a higher, you know, the higher time frame, the swing low is the the highest significance we give to it. In any way, we are looking for the most uh, recent swing low to the most recent swing high. We classify this area as a dealing range. Okay, within this dealing range, we then identify an area of external liquidity, right, which would be above the top of the dealing range, and in this case below it. Although it's not always that simple, um, in this case it works for our current logic and framework. Then within the dealing range, we identify some key levels of liquidity. Uh, now, identifying key levels of liquidity within a dealing range we use a, a number of, of concepts and um, ideas one of them is um, or first of all I should say that um, ICT teaches if you consider this the dealing range and we draw a 50 percent um, 0.5 percent uh, a, thre a threshold within the dealing range anything above that is considered a premium price and anything below that is considered a discount market or discount price. Now the general idea is to be looking for long positions in the discount market and consider short positions within the premium market. Again, this is really simplified, but it works. Um, but this will work for now in thinking about it. Right, so once we've identified the price once we have identified uh, the dealing range and we identified with the discount market is, then we can start thinking about 
where we want to enter a position. Now, how do we identify areas of interest and where to enter positions? One of the ways you can do that is by um, looking for what ICT, one of ICT concepts is, is what uh, order blocks, although the term has been used a lot these days, order block has come to mean and represent a number of things. Um, in this case, uh, we use it to represent an area that uh, is a sort of bookmark for, uh, well, we identify it as a, a series of down close candles or one down close candle, depending on the time frame, before an impulse would move up. Okay, and uh, if it were, uh, if we were looking for a bearish order block per se, um, we would uh, consider it before a move down, an impulsive move down. That again, oversimplification, but it works for now. So if you would, I can just hide this for now. Let me just move it away. I'll, I'll just, uh, so we use this candle as um, the water blocker. We visually identify this candle as the water blocker price is likely to revisit. The idea is that price is to going to revisit this area. Okay. Um, now, why is this one also, why was this candle and this price range considered an area where price was likely to be revisited? For two reasons. It is an order block. There's a swing low located here. Okay. And obviously it is within discount threshold. Right. Those are those are those are the three main reasons why we can first consider this area an area of interest. Okay. Now, before all of this price action, I'm talking about this price action. Before all of this, we only had this area to look at. Okay. We already thought that price was likely to return to the order block, but what makes it more likely is how how we had an engineering of liquidity as price ranged on over the day. Now what I mean is, as price ranged, it created relatively equal lows, as marked by the red line at the bottom, with a low here, here, and here. Okay, once these sort of mm, support structure is manufactured in the market. A lot of, I guess, retail or um, ideas uh, will tell you that, uh, you know, because price has revisited this area, it is likely a strong resistance, okay? So when this happens, you, you're sort of manufacturing liquidity because below this area, what do you have? You will likely have people putting their stops, right? In this case, it's going to be buy stops. All right. This is an engineering of liquidity. All right. So equally the same here, you have relatively equal highs. So naturally above them, you're going to have liquidity, right? As you have sell side liquidity, as you have people accumulating their stop, their stops. So Above the equal highs here, sell side. And obviously, this is a significant high. Therefore, there's also sell side liquidity above here. And it's the previous day high, so this is an important level. We'll get back to that now. Uh, essentially, what has happened here is throughout the day, you had an engineering of liquidity. Now we expected price to return and revisit the order block. Okay. Um, and at the same time, it became a likely occurrence because of the engineering of liquidity that happened before that. So another concept that ICT teaches is uh, the idea of uh, price and time. So it's, well, it's, 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 it's good and well to understand price and things like that and try and, you know, um, 
work out theories and uh, predict uh, things around around price uh, alone but you know you need it's not good enough because you do need to consider the time of day and where likely there is to be uh, the most volume and sort of uh, volatility going on uh, right so and uh, ICT also teaches the concept of uh, uh, the New York kill zone, okay, which is essentially a time zone so between half past eight and ten o'clock in the asset market, where we have um, the probability for for the most uh, volatility, okay. So, and the stocks uh, open half past nine, but before that, uh, we have news releases as so half past eight. And ICT teaches that normally at this time you have a fake move, right? So it's you, you have a fake move up, for instance, and then um, the real move uh, at half past nine, uh, just about at half past nine, as you can see here, marked by that candle. Well, um, you move in the opposite direction. Okay, this is normally the setup. the The move just after half past eight is is the Judas swing, uh, as it's called. And then uh, by half past nine, the move in the opposite direction happened. This is not always the case, obviously, but it is a high probability setup. And it's exactly what we see happen in Bitcoin. Okay. The last swing high is tapped. And then we have um, quite a violent uh, uh, redistribution of price. Price is uh, delivered. Uh, quite aggressively downwards and always what we want to see when we're tapping equal lows is this sort of uh, displacement of price right as it quite violently comes through the level if we see pattering towards the level and like slowly reaching there this is um this is normally not a good indicator that price is likely to go through there okay we want to see this strong displacement displacement through the relative equal lows this gives us the setup, right? This is the run on liquidity that we've been looking for, right? And that's the sort of what happens here. We get the run on liquidity and, it, and we get down into the order block just as we have the Judas swing at half past nine in the New York kill zone, okay? This was a classic setup. Um, right, so I'm not going to talk on too much more about that. If people have questions, they can definitely ask me and I can go into more detail about specifically some of the individual components that make this up. Otherwise, if you're more interested, you can go over to ICT's YouTube channel and um, he's got a free mentorship available and definitely worth checking out. All right. Uh, secondly, what I want to draw people's attention to is um, what's happened after this range we had a small break up to the upside right so <clears throat> i'm just gonna actually um give people a little bit of why I, my thinking about this all right this is an order block again into the order block price retraces uh here we have a swing low this for me is a right now this for me i consider to be quite a key level why? Because we have a, we have a key swing low here, and we are establishing equal lows, right? Equal lows. What has this done? You're beginning the the process of manufacturing liquidity, of manufacturing stops above below these lows, right? Now, if we breach them and go through the swing low. This is going to set up a good buying opportunity. Below that, we have a fair value gap. Um, in my case, if price does breach through here, this will be another area to look out for. And above, right, I do believe we're more likely um, upside before we go down. Okay. Um, why do I say that? It's because we are actually, we can consider from uh, from this swing high to this swing low, we consider this another dealing range. And we are currently in the discount of this dealing range. Oh, 
excuse me, in the premium of this dealing range. Okay, so in terms of probabilities, we want to short higher into the premium. And the way price is booked is that it wants to, uh, price wants to sort of balance um, where there's an imbalance and where price wasn't um, delivered efficiently. So what I mean is if you go into the 15 minute, you have a big sort of displacement down here. Now oftentimes price is not delivered efficiently and the market wants to rebalance this. So it's more likely that price trends upwards to rebalance this imbalance. Okay, this imbalance is marked by the fair value gap, right? You can see it in here from the bottom of this candle to the top of this candle, right? Price only painted one time through here. This is a clear sign that there's an imbalance in the market. Okay, therefore we're looking for price to first go into a premium and rebalance this before we look for a short lower. Okay, so we expect that up here, at least in, I'm actually looking at this level in particular, the swing low, right, because it's in the premium and um, definitely an area of interest. Now, if we do get rejected um, up here, then I'm going to be looking for this level to be taken. Okay, so that is a, just a, uh, a small introduction to the to the concepts of ICT. By no means is it uh, uh, thorough or uh, does it justice, but hopefully some people start or maybe uh, find interest in some of these things that I've talked about. And um, yeah, as I said, if you are interested, you can message me. Um, the resource available out there and there's a great community and uh, we definitely um, be willing to um, uh, teach people and point them in the right direction. Uh, uh, these things do work. People, uh, you, yeah. And anyway, <laughs> everyone uh, have a good day. Thank you for watching.